Hello again everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Meh. Now for today's episode, we are going to tackle about these two adrenal cortex disorders, which is the Addison's disease and Cushing's disease. Oh, no. So stay with me until the end, so we'll be together forever and ever. <laughs> well, enough with this lom lom law. Let's start by knowing the teeny tiny adrenal glands, oh. which is composed of adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. Ah. So among the two, we will focus on the adrenal cortex. Oh. To make it easier, adrenal cortex secretes three major hormones. <gasps> That is the glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, and the sex hormone. The glucocorticoids includes the cortisol, cortisone, and corticosterone, which mediate the stress response, promote sodium and water retention, potassium secretion, and suppress the ACTH secretion. We can think that these glucocorticoids is kind of sweet, so let's consider it as sugary. And that is our first S sugar next is the mineralocorticoids which also includes aldosterone and deoxycorticosterone this promotes sodium and water retention and potassium secretion now for this one let's think of it as salty because of that sodium so that will be our second s salt the sugar, the salt, and for the third is the sex, which is for the sex hormone. It includes androgens, estrogen, and progesterone, which develop and maintain secondary sex characteristics and libido. Duh. Now let's proceed to the disorders. Oh, come on. Addison's disease is characterized by a decrease in the production of ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone. <gasps> you may be confused of this term, but ACTH is released in our pituitary gland to stimulate other hormones such as cortisol. So in this disorder, there is a decreased production of ACTH which will also lead a decreased production of these three major hormones, the sugar, salt, and sex. Yeah. While in Cushing's disease, it is characterized by an increase in the production of cortisol which is a total opposite of the Addison's disease. Which also will lead to increased salt, sugar, and sex. Now to know their manifestation, let's take, let's base on the three S: the salt, sugar, and sex. The salt, sugar, and sex. For the Addison's disease, as I have said a while ago, all of them are decreased. <gasps> So let's start with the first S, the salt. Oh no! In Addison, there is a decrease in mineralocorticoids that will also result to decrease in aldosterone. And the function of aldosterone is sodium and water reabsorption. So because of decreased aldosterone, there will be also a decrease in sodium and water reabsorption. So just imagine that your body doesn't reabsorb enough water. So what will happen to you? You're always urinating. That's why one manifestation in Addison is polyuria that will also lead to dehydration. Ah. And because of that, your blood pressure will be decreased that can lead you in possible shock. Ah. While in Cushing's disease, <gasps> There is an increased mineralocorticoids that will lead you to increase sodium and water reabsorption. Oh, come on. And by that concept, your body will have edema and of course, there is an occurrence of moon phase or some doctors call it a moon phase. And that is the hallmark sign of a Cushing's disease. Ooh. Also remember that because of this increased mineralocorticoids, your blood pressure will also be increased and just the opposite of the Addison's this is yeah so let's proceed to the sugar in addison's disease when you have a decrease glucocorticoids which is related in sugar 
Your glucose will also be decreased. Oh no! And we all know that glucose provides us energy. That's why, because of that decreased glucose, we have a manifestation of weakness. Oh. But while in sugar, there is an increase in glucocorticoids, which will result to hyperglycemia. And because of that overly production of glucose, it will be converted to fat. That's why in Cushing's disease, you'll observe this jungle obesity and also this buffalo hump. So you may see in the picture what it looks like. Aww. And for the next one, the Addison's disease have this low sex hormone which means there is a decreased production of androgens which will make your libido also decrease. Aww. And when you're observing them, there is also a decreased number of axillary hair compared to the Cushing's disease which has an increased androgen, an increased libido and one thing that you'll notice, there is a presence of hirsutism <gasps> which is usually fine in a female So how would we know if a patient has this kind of disorders? We have this diagnostic test called ACTH stimulation for Addison's disease which will give you a result of decreased cortisol level which is also present in Addison's disease. While in Cushing's disease, there is a diagnostic test called dexamethasone suppression test that will give you a result of increased ACTH. And also, their electrolyte disturbances shows hyponatremic and hyperkalemic for Addison's disease. So there is a decreased number of sodium and increased number of potassium for Addison's disease while in Cushing's disease, there is a hypernatremia and hypokalemia. So as a nurse, how would you manage this kind of patient? Yeah! For the Addison's disease, you have to maintain and promote adequate blood volume and also provide IVF such as D5NSS which is a dextrose that will provide sugar, salt, and water. And also take note for their diet which is a high caloric diet. There will be also a steroid therapy that is the backbone of the treatment which is for life treatment. Oh no! This also includes fluidocortisone, which is a replenished mineral of corticoids, and hydrocortisone or the prednisone, which is the common one that is for the glucocorticoids. Oh. And always remember to give this kind of medication according to circadian rhythm, which is two thirds in the morning and one third in the afternoon. Take note of that. The side effect will be water retention, immunosuppression, and hyperglycemia. <gasps> so your priority is prevention of infection and monitoring of blood glucose level. You must also watch out for a sudden withdrawal of medication because it may cause crisis. <gasps> and what is that crisis? That is what we call adrenal crisis where you'll observe the patient has severe weakness and shock. Oh. Now that's for the Addison's disease. While in Cushing's disease, your nursing care will be psychological support and the most important is to limit the caloric and fluid intake of the patient. And also the I and O and the weight of the patient must always be monitored and you can provide medical adrenalectomy which suppress the steroids function. Whoa. An example of this is aminoglutatamide, which inhibit cholesterol synthesis, aketoconazole, which inhibit cholesterol synthesis, ametropine, which inhibits adrenal cortex steroid synthesis, and more. But if the condition is overwhelming, a surgical intervention is required, which can be a bilateral or subtotal adrenalectomy. <gasps> so that's it for the Cushing's disease. Boom. Now to differentiate both of them. If you want to remember it well and well, Addison's disease and Cushing's disease have this letter D for Addison and letter U for Cushing's. Whoa. Now for the Addison's letter D, always remember letter D for down, ah. which means the three hormones are down. Yeah. While in Cushing's disease, the letter U, remember it as up, meaning the three hormones are all upward. So as easy as that. Whoa. 
Wow. And that's it for Addison and Cushing's disease. I hope that you learned something on my video and watch my next video for more and more discussions. So that's all now for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.